I'm going to see if I can do a chemical peel in 20 minutes. I know I can. <laughs> um, but okay, so I wanted to get on here. I'm Heidi Prakash, owner of Prakash Organics. I am a master esthetician. I've been an esthetician since I was 28 years old. I'm 42 now, and I've been in the industry since I was about 25. I specialize in chemical peel and microneedling. My favorite modalities are what is called CIT, collagen induction therapy. I wanted to show you how I do a mild chemical peel so you can also see and experience that they're really not too bad and they make immense changes in your skin. So I did already start. I went ahead and cleansed my face twice. I do use the cosmetic slime because it's the most corrective plant-based skincare line to date that I've been able to find in the United States. And this is the cleanser I cleanse twice with. This is a prepping cleanser and I find um, that it works best to prep the skin before a chemical peel. Um, also, especially if you're ever gonna do like an enzyme mask at home or put something that's a little bit more active on the skin. Um, alpha hydroxy acids have a really hard time penetrating through oil. It's why if the esthetician doesn't get enough oil off the skin or all the oil off the skin, that um, chemical peels won't really penetrate and you won't get as good a result. It's also why when you go to a dermatologist's office or some med spas, they actually will strip the skin with acetone. Yeah they strip the skin with acetone because it removes all the oil and allows the peels to penetrate deeper. I'm personally not a fan of that. So I use this cleanser and a product by cosmetics called purity balance, which of course I forgot. Son of a gun. <sighs> okay. Hold one sec. Here we are. So I've cleansed my face twice. I now am going to take Purity Balance and completely strip all the oil off my face. I actually do this step twice because um, I find it works better. So I'm going to hit the forehead. I go into the whole eyebrow. If you do not have microbladed brows, I highly recommend you hit the eyebrows. Go into the hairline. You want to be a little aggressive. You want to see the skin pink up. I want to see good circulation. This is going to tell you that the client um, has good skin circulation and it's going to penetrate there. I'm not sorry. I'm trying to do too much right now. By seeing the pinkening of the skin, it shows that they have really good circulation, which means they're going to have a better result. People who are smokers or don't pick up, they may not peel as well because they just don't have enough circulation in their tissues to really release the skin. So you want to see them turn pink. Okay, so that's the first swipe. For some people, depending on what peel you're doing, like this part is actually spicier than Benefit Peel. Um, Purity Balance has a real punch behind it when you use rough gauze to apply it, which is why I recommend everybody kind of apply it this way. So I'm going to hit my pigmented areas a little bit more because I want the peel to go in there. Under under get those bunny lines I never take nose rings out I've always left them in and I feather into the hairline I do get behind the ear because tightening this skin up here is what tightens this up here okay Whew, that was spicy so this is just purity balance which is a lactic and salicylic acid based astringent like toner. This is the back bar size. See you, Anna. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, cause this is my very first peel of the season. I'm just gonna apply the peel directly. Normally I would put Jesner on and then a lit the peel, but because um, it's my very first one, I don't wanna use Jesner yet. And I'm just gonna use the skin balancing peel. Hey Barb. Okay, so I'm gonna start out with three pumps. And this is it, folks. This literally is the chemical peel. Can you massage it, massage it. Notice how I'm getting into the eyebrows, close up around the eye. I do not go like this, which is what like a lot of medical offices and stuff will do. I get in there. This is where the wrinkles need to go away the fine lines. I go into the hairline, 
because I don't want to have flaking and peeling to here, right? I want it all the way back in here. So all my face is treated. I go up to the, I don't know what this part of the ear is called. And I'm not going to pull this one down on my neck just because I just started using retinoids again. And because this is a high retinoid content, I don't want to get a retinol rash on my neck yet because my skin's just not used to it. So yeah, three pumps. Um, and then what you do is you press this in. The pressing is really important. You want to hear that sound you want to look for? Um, pressing helps activate the retinoids. So you want to press, press, press. Okay. And that's it. I'm going to leave this on for six, for two to six hours. I'll probably leave it on for six. I'll probably just actually wash it off before I go to bed tonight. So it could be on for seven or eight. Doesn't really matter. After a certain amount of time, it just stops working. Um, so it doesn't matter if you leave it on long. Okay. Um, so I do ship peel kits to people. Um, I have you do a peel consultation. And then if you are a candidate for the peel and I feel comfortable with working with you, then I go ahead and ship you the peel. And how my peel kits work is you get all your peel supplies except for an oil cleanser and you also get all your post care because I'm a nice bitch like that. Honestly, the reason why I include all post care is I found out that when it comes to chemical peels, if the outcome is not ideally what you wanted, it typically is because something went, happen went wrong in the post care. And after all the years that I've been doing chemical peels, I just found it was easier to give the post care to people and include it in the price of the peel than it was trying to get them to buy all the full retail sizes. When I make the kits, I can make more travel size options and it just makes it more cost effective for everybody. So when you get a peel kit from me, it comes with all the supplies to do the peels. It comes with a Zoom appointment where I walk you through every step of applying the peel. And then you get heavier oil, okay? Because I do the no water method. You get rescue balm. You get sun butter SPF 27, which is a no water-based sun butter. And you get awaken mask. This mask is amazing for resetting the microbiome after a chemical peel because that does get disrupted. It also loads the skin with a ton of marine minerals when the skin is at its most raw state so it can really, really absorb everything. I think Awaken Mask is absolutely amazing post peel. I always give you enough to do one full application um, when I let you know it's time to do that. But ideally, I like to see clients do it three to four nights in a row if they can. And this is more for medium depth peels, like what I did today was a, a mild peel. But you do get all of your post care with the peel kits. Um, does anybody have any questions? Like my skin's not hot or spicy at all anymore. It just feels like I have a face mask on. I could go out in public like this is all you're going to see. I'm not going to put anything over it. I'm not going to put sunscreen on it. I'm not going to do nothing because I do not want to change the pH balance of the peel. Um, the acids that you're putting on your skin are just as important as what the pH balance of the peels are. So if I add anything else to this peel, it can throw off the pH and then it will not penetrate, you know, at the same depth that I'm wanting it to. So ideally you just get in your car and go home or stay home. That's one of the beauties I love doing about the peels long distance is you can just do them in the comfort of your own home. Um, and then you don't have to go anywhere afterwards. Does anybody have any questions about the chemical peels or anything? Um, the other thing with the peels is that um, flower sack towels are actually my favorite thing to use on the face. This is a flower sack towel. Um, you can get them. I, these ones I got at Target. You can also get them from Amazon. If I were to order them again, I'd get organic versions. Um, but so what I do is I use these to dry my face after cleansing because they're so gentle. And then when I am using them for removing chemical peels or even like face masks, things like that, what I do is I snip it and tear it. And then I snip it again and tear it. So you get four squares like this. And these, and you can see these are stained. Like, so you can see all my makeup and mascara stains on here. This is not because I wash my face. <laughs> this is actually stained. Um, it goes to show you how pigmented things are sometimes in your makeup. Um, so this is what I use to do the no water method and also remove the chemical peel on my face as I use these flower sack towels. If people don't have these, I just advise that they use a t-shirt cut up. Um, so someone is asking, how long do you wait to put anything else on? So what I'll do is I'll wear this chemical peel 
for like six or so hours and then I'm going to massage oil cleanser into my face and then I'm going to take one of these um squares of fabric they're like this big okay when they're torn and I'm going to get it wet and then I'm going to wring it out as much as I possibly possibly can again like it's called the no water method so the least amount of water as possible and then I'm going to wipe that oil cleanser with the peel off my face um, you can rinse the cloth and wring it out and use it a second time, or you can get a fresh one, um, however you want to do it, but I wipe it off. And then when I'm done wiping off, I'm going to put heavier face oil on. And that's all I'm going to wear tonight is heavier face oil. And then tomorrow morning when I wake up, I'm going to put heavier face oil on and all throughout the day tomorrow, I'm just going to put heavier face oil on. If I feel like I need some more face oil, I'm going to put heavier on. If I am going to go out and about, I then I'm going to apply my sun butter SPF 27 over the top. Okay. And the sun butter, um, I have one already open in my, the sun butter does not fully blend in. It's one of the reasons why I actually like it because then I can see exactly where my sunscreen is and my sunscreen isn't. Okay. So then, and I can reapply the sunscreen as much as I would like, and I can reapply oil as much as I like. And then tomorrow evening, I'm going to do the no water method oil cleansing again, where I'm going to massage oil cleanser into my face. I'm going to get the cloth wet, wring it out wipe the oil cleanser on my face, and then I'm gonna put heavier oil on again. Um, so the no water method is where I have you do oil in the morning and throughout the day. You only cleanse your face at night. You keep as little water on your face as possible. You you start using Rescue Balm, okay? Because sometimes it gets to a point in a chemical peel where the oil is not enough. So that's when you start using Rescue Balm. If you feel like the oil is just not enough or you start peeling and fresh skin is being exposed, that's when you want to start putting the rescue balm on that because it's like a it's thicker so it's like a liquid band-aid so this is how the sun butter rubs in okay so see it's a it's not a nano zinc it's a true zinc so the thing i like about it is it um kind of calms down the redness the inflammation because there's zinc in it and then you can see where the sunscreen is so as i'm doing like more intense peels and i'm like peeling peeling i will cake this shit on like diaper cream. I want to see a chunk of the sunscreen. I know the skin cannot touch it, right? If I know I can see that thing of a sunscreen on it. And then this is the Rescue Balm. I don't want to use this one because it's a, it's for a peel kit. Um, but Rescue Balm, it's thicker. So it's not like, so like, like the Anfisa, like the Anfisa Balm that has, um, people just love. So like, as you put this stuff and use it, it's great for the skin because it like just melts in like it turns to this I'll show you the rescue balm I'll just use it but with rescue balm it's much thicker like I don't want it to melt to an into an oil I want it to stay thick like see how that stays thick and then it occludes it it's basically like a vegetable based aquaphor okay it's it's like 90 or 95 percent shea butter it's got copper peptides in it which are really essential in wound healing um, it's got some white willow bark, white willow, white willow bark extract in it that helps with inflammation. It was the whole reason they created Rescue Balm was for post chemical peels. That's why the product was originally created. Um, the reason why I do the no water method is because think of it like a tattoo or a scab. If you keep soaking it in water, it's gonna come off. You you want the scab to stay until the wound is properly healing to help the wound properly heal, right? So every time you get the face wet, it's going to cause the face to peel faster. And if the peel, if the peel peels faster, if the face peels faster, it doesn't go as deep. So you actually prevent it from dropping it and going as deep as it could go. And also if you expose the fresh skin to UV light too soon, you're going to re-pigment back all the pigment you just lightened. So I was discussing in my other video, it's like when you do, when you get the chemical peel and the skin sloughs off, especially if it's in areas where there was pigments, like if, as these areas peel off, when this first peels, there's a good chance that like maybe that spot, not from this peel, but there'll be a peel that I do where like this spot actually peels out. And if I keep that covered, like if I do a deep peel, which I will, a deeper peel, um, I'll keep it covered and I'll keep like the sun butter on it and not let like touch it because it's at that moment where the cells are like, okay, do I need to make more melanin to make this go dark to protect myself? Or do I feel safe and I don't need to pr produce melanin to protect this spot? So that's why you don't want any sunlight to t touch the area. 
um, when you freshly peeled, when it's like a deeper peel, because it's making its decision. I want it to decide to not make more melanin. So that is why with doing the no water method, the skin that's on there that hasn't peeled off yet, that's major for protection for the skin underneath. So the longer the skin hangs on, the more time the skin underneath has time to regenerate and renew itself and get to a later phase in the wound healing process so that when the skin does eventually peel off, it's not as susceptible to re-pigmenting. And doing the no water method will cause the skin longer to hang on. It will take longer for it to peel off. But I'm telling you, after the 12 years of experience I've had with chemical peels, in my 30s, in my earlier 30s, I was always in such a rush. Like I would do things to my skin to make it peel faster. Like I would use enzymes and things like that and force the skin off. The skin would always get angry. Um, it would be more of a superficial peel. And I just learned over time and through more education and through getting different trainings from different um, skincare lines and chemical peel lines. Like I've had training from the Eileen Brennan peel. I've had it from PCA. I've had SkinCeuticals training. I've had SkinMedica training. I've had cosmetics training. I've had Murat, well, if you can call glycolic acid training, but I've just, I've had a lot of extensive chemical peel training and the no water method I'm telling you is superior. You get a deeper peel and you end up not having to do as many peels because you're able to remove more pigment by doing the no water method. You don't want it to get wet. Treat your chemical peel like a tattoo. Keep it moist with a balm or something, but keep it dry. So that's why I do the no water method. But I mean, what, that's what a chemical peel is. It's a controlled wound. We've intentionally wounded the face with um, low pH acids. We've wounded it. It's a scab. You, you're always, don't pick a scab. You don't pick scabs. You don't pick scabs. You don't soak scabs in water. You don't soak scabs in alcohol. You leave them <laughs> alone. So that's my no water method. Um, how many days no water? So what I tend to tell people is, so if you're doing a mild peel like what I have, I'm not going to get any peeling. I'm going to get like micro flaking to maybe I'll have like a patch or two that gets exposed. And when I say that, it's going to be around like the more movable parts of my face. Okay. So I will do the no water method for like five days. And then in five days, I'm going to go back to my normal skincare routine minus retinoids, alpha hydroxy acids, any of like the more actives. Like I won't use Purity Clean. I won't use Clarify. I won't use, I'll use Simply Brilliant. It's going to be very active. Um, but I hold off on those for like another two to three days. So I incorporate those usually within two to three days after I've started back on my normal skincare routine. Now, if my face is peeling, like where things are coming off and it's peeling, so more like a medium depth peel, what I tell people is no water until the face is 50% peeled if you're a fits three or below. And if you're like a 3.5 or above, I say wait till the skin is 75% peeled off because the higher Fitzpatrick's have a higher chance of hyperpigmenting because they have more melanocyte activity in their skin where the melanin can clump together because they have more of it. Like the lighter, the paler you are, the more cray cray you can go with chemical peels, the more aggressive you can go. It's like, like, chem like Nicole Kidman is like every esthetician's chemical peel dream. Whereas the higher Fitzpatrick's, you really got to keep the inflammation under control. So that's what, and then, so, and then after that amount of time, I say, go back to the, you can either still stick with an oil cleanser and just use water to rinse, or you're welcome to go to like a gentle foaming cleanser, but you don't want to force the skin off until it's time. It's also why I require that my clients send me photos on day five. And on day five, I actually will advise them at that time, whether they can start using water or not. Um, because I don't, I've, I had a client last year. It was the first time it ever happened to me but I had her do a chemical peel. It was a medium depth. And, um, finally after like three weeks, it was, it was, I'm not kidding. It was like three weeks. She's like, so my face still hasn't peeled. And I'm like, what? So, um, then with her, I'm like, no, now we're going to force it off. Now we're going to like, obviously she needs some help. We're taking her off. Um, and her results, I think her results ended up being fine. She never had anything, um, negative to say about it at all, but I'd never seen that before. So everyone's different. I'd done chemical pills for 12 years and, I still am learning new stuff all the time. Um, so any more questions before I let you guys all go? All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will be doing another one of these. Like as I bump up and get stronger, I will post those as well. So you can see over time kind of how the stepping system goes with chemical peels. So this one's not going to be very exciting to watch because it's just going to be some light. Like no one's really going to be able to tell I did one. I'll be able to tell, but you guys may not. 
but then we'll get to the point where my face is shedding like a snake and we can all watch that journey together. Um, you guys are all so welcome. Thank you. Have a great day.